your reality is a matter of habit. Really, your reality is a matter of habit. Your reality is your safe, mundane, serviceable, everyday world seen through the lens of your eyes. Now close those lenses. Trust me, close your eyes for just 10 seconds and let me offer you an alternative. And here is what I propose. What if, through my art, I offered you ways to remake your world by offering you different lenses of perception. Visualize these lenses. Now open your eyes. Let me take you on a journey through an artwork, just one artwork, and I pick it because it moves through different times and spaces. We will go deep within our bodies and we will fly to the moon. And through this, I will offer the world that you think you know in six, at least six distinctly different ways. The work I have picked is called the Astrolab. It was part of my installation at the Kochi Biennale, the previous one, and it is composed of six panels. And it is the work from which these details are being shown to you. So how did I begin? Well, sometimes looking back to history offers insights to a way forward. So my inspiration began with a fascination for this astronomical instrument called the astrolabe, which was used by European sailors to find a way to the east. The history of the astrolabe is about 2,000 years old, and you could call it a sort of mechanical computer used to plot problems about time and the position of the sun and the planets in the sky. So I took this astrolabe, which was typically about six inches high, and I blew it up, I enlarged it to several hundreds of times its size. I intervened in it and I moved and changed things so that now it hovered between the real and the abstract. Or should I say, the seemingly abstract. Because nothing in the astrolab or the astrolabe is actually abstract. It is your world, your real world, seen through different lenses macro and micro. It is your world seen through the lens of giant satellites and telescopes which are scouring the universe. It is your world seen through the lens of scanning, tunneling electron microscopes that are looking deep within your own bodies. It is the world seen deeper still through giant particle colliders that hurl particles at each other watch the collision and study the debris for knowledge and clues about our place in the universe. Because collisions produce knowledge. And this is true even when different cultures, ideas, people collide. And why does this happen? It's because we are world makers and world travelers. My work, The Astrolab, draws clues from ancient maps and from stories of travelers who traveled the world between the 15th and the 17th century, which is sometimes called the Age of Discovery. It was a time when geography shaped history. It was a time when intrepid travelers like Vasco da Gama came to Indian shores, chasing dreams of great wealth and lands to exploit. But they also brought with them new thoughts, new products, new skills. The resultant you know, collision was blood-soaked and terrible, which is evoked by this detail of mine from the astrolab, which shows a giant blood clot within our bodies. It is surrounded by hooks, which actually belong to the astrolabe, but which suddenly look very menacing. What I'm trying to say is that these collisions not just changed both parties of seafarers and land dwellers, but it sent out ripples that changed the very knowledge of the world. Just as the knowledge of my artwork changes with your encounter with it. For example, there are people who have looked at this very detail of the blood clot and seen within it lattices, nets, fishes, bringing to mind the great Chinavala or the famous Chinese fishing nets of Kochi, which in turn evoke encounters with other cultures and civilizations. They have seen 
the familiar in unfamiliar things. When you embrace the familiar in the unfamiliar or vice versa, new forms of thinking are generated. What do I mean by this? After all, you can argue that there are no boundaries to limit your imagination, but really, isn't that a problem? If you can imagine just about anything, what do you imagine? Where do you begin? My art tries to help by offering a scaffolding on which to build the world, to make the world of your imagination and let it fly far. And it is in these spaces between the real and the unreal that the human imagination lives. Can it go too far? Not really, because there's always something familiar that will draw you back into the world of the imagination and the world of my artwork. And I truly believe that the sign of human intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. And I do acknowledge that Einstein said it a long time ago as well. So the further away from my artwork your normalcy is, the more your imagination is activated and the greater your insights. So activate the world of your imagination and watch, watch the world of your perception change. Take this old Portuguese coin that I have placed at the center of my artwork. Am I saying that money rules the world? <laughs> Not at all. It is, after all, a very tiny coin in a very large artwork. So while I acknowledge its driving power in the world, I undercut its power by making it very tiny indeed. Power. Now, that's a loaded word. I believe there is real power in simplicity and a deep link between powerful simplicity and thoughtful complexity. I believe a large part of the power of my artworks derives from the fact that it is drawn entirely with a simple pencil. And in this context, I have a lovely story to narrate. A bright young girl from Kerala called me out of the blue and said she was doing her 10 standard thesis on my artwork, which she had seen at the Kochi Biennale. She said how the artwork was a favorite with all her friends which is proven by the fact that the greatest number of selfies were taken in front of it. I was, of course, deeply flattered. This is the kind of feedback we artists like to get, but I was also intrigued. So when she came to interview me, I asked her, what was it about my artwork that had captured their collective consciousness? And her answer was a revelation for me. She said it was because the entire artwork was done with a pencil that had captured hers and her classmates' imagination, because all of them had held the pencil, the humble tool of a pencil, at some point of time in their lives, whether it was to learn to write or draw or doodle or scribble. However, they also felt that I had pushed what a pencil can do to a point that was way beyond what they had imagined. And in this way, I captured their imagination. My work constantly plays with the real and the abstract, between the simple and the complex. And embedded in this complex journey of the Astrolab is a very simple trip that I took to Kochi, where I walked its streets and found a street named after the family to which I belong, where I listened to travelers' tales about seafarers who came on the sea waters and landed on the seashores. You see, this was very necessary. If we are to make worlds, we have to locate ourselves both philosophically and physically. So let us pause for a moment to locate where we are right now, in this place, in this time. Let me draw your attention to a very faint sound that started a little while ago. It is the soundtrack that was played at the Fluidity of Horizons, which is where my artwork, The Astrolab, was shown. Visitors to the installation, if they spent time and paid attention, listened to this. They heard the same soundtrack of the lapping of waters, the swish of the waves, perhaps the tinkle of money later, perhaps the buzz of traders' voices, 
all of which located them back in the world of the artwork. And we can pause a small moment to listen to the sound. But let me now start flipping the lenses a little more and locate ourselves in a different way right now. So right now, here you are listening to me speak, but right now, at the very same time, deep within your bodies, cells are dividing and multiplying. Deeper still is the quantum buzz, particles forming and disappearing. Outside, we're all on a planet that is spinning dizzily and hurtling through space at dizzying speeds. And we're not aware of any of this unless we change our lenses and change our focus. Which brings me to the very last panel of my artwork, the Astrolab, where we are now explorers on the moon. We are watching our beautiful planet, the Earth, rise from the position of being on the surface of the moon. So consider, consider where we've come. We started with a tiny instrument, six inches high, when we were land-based, looking up at the stars and the moon and the sky. And now here we are on the surface of the moon, upending perspectives, thinking about our role in space, our place in the moon, the stars, the world beyond. You see how you have traveled. You see how you have traveled with me to experience and enjoy and encounter the astrolabe and flipped your lenses of perception so that here, finally, the world stands revealed. The world of my astrolabe and the world of your imagination. Thank you.